Savannah Guthrie. I know. I'm going to gonna ask you some question you've never been asked before. Named after one of the great cities in America and one of the most <laughs> fabulous regional theaters, uh, repertory theaters. In Savannah? So, yeah. Savannah Guthrie, the Guthrie in Minneapolis and Savannah, Savannah, Georgia. Oh, do you know I've never been to Savannah? Is your name really Savannah or is that something like some, some newsroom editor said? You know what? Listen, Susan. <laughs> Susan Guthrie just don't make it. Sue Guthrie? I don't see it. Savannah Guthrie. There we go. You know what? I come by my name honestly. Likewise. I'm named after my great grandmother. What about you? Were you, Did you Tom, ever think of Tom like, Hankowitz and no, you changed I, it? No, that was Hankowski. It. My name has always been nah, nah. That's what it sounds like and that's what it's always been. It's a good name. It's who I am. I could see Can't it in light someday. It. But Savannah Guthrie, that's <laughs> that's marquee value. Well, most people call me Samantha, but I answer to it. <laughs> Do people ever call you by the wrong name? Um, I have been I have been called Tom Cruise quite a few times. That's yeah. a good one, though. I, and I, I I take Tom Jones every now and again. <laughs> I, I I I get that. <laughs> so taking on Mr. Rogers, somebody that everybody knows and loves. When was the moment that you knew you could do it? It was a discussion I had with Mari, uh, the boss, Mari Heller, because I had read the screenplay a long time ago. Uh, before anybody was involved with it, and I said, okay, I think I get it, yeah, the Fred Rogers of it all. When um, uh, she, she and I had corresponded about trying to find something to do together, and when she said, I found this thing, and you actually know of it, but um, I, 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 there's something there that I'd like to try. And so I, I know it, okay, Mr. Rogers is going to go. So I read it, and I came back, and I said, all right, <laughs> what's the deal here? And when she told me that she was not interested in any kind of editorial comment on who Mr. Rogers was, nor did she want an imitation of Mr. Rogers' physicality or presentation. She said, essentially, you'll get a wig, and you'll get a, we'll do something with your eyebrows, and all the rest is going to be up to you. That's when I thought, okay, um, this, is a, this is a deep throw on something that is going to have to be... Um, there's going to have to have a DNA to it as opposed to teeth, nose, consumer, uh, CGI or something like that. I, I, I got to put on essentially an, the equal to Batman's cape and cowl, you know, to be Batman, but I was in a cardigan sweater and blue deck shoes and I still felt just as, just as identified um, on an on a exter uh, external front as a, and everything else was going to have to come out of some faith that uh, I could do it and that Mari would tell me when I was wrong. It is in the essence of Mr. Rogers. It's something behind the eyes. There is... A, talking to Joanne Rogers, who just said, oh, oh, Fred would get full of himself every now and again. <laughs> oh, Fred made me mad a lot more than he made me mad. Uh, uh, there was a, uh, uh, did I say that correctly? Anyway, uh, the, <laughs> there is, what they can't believe is that there was some trick to it. Even Tom Junod, by, you know, the journalist that did it, said, what's the deal here? What's he going for here? What's he hiding? What's the canard? What's the, what's the diabolical scheme that he is actually pulling on over us in order to make us feel better about ourselves mm. or give other people slack because they might be having a bad day too. And uh, there was none. And that's, I think, that kind of absolute is something that people do not want to accept. Mm. They do not want to believe that he was actually like this. They want there to be a dark side. They want there to be some degree of, of a cynical trick that is being pulled over our eyes because there's no way a guy who can... A guy can be a, a, a literally a, a ordained minister, you know, he was, he was essentially the Reverend Fred Rogers, and yet he had a children's television show that wasn't selling anything, had no commercials, wasn't, wasn't uh, hell-bent on, um, on promoting anything, and never used, never used the word God. He was, a, he was a minister who prayed every day for the people that he knew and he loved. And yet he never told children that God loves you or God is going to take care of you. He instead said this other thing, which was uh, almost, um, it's almost diabolical in its simplicity, which is it's, it's okay to be sad sometimes. It's okay.
Ooh, and that, wait a minute, that sounds like some sort of uh, nefarious kind of like doublespeak to get us to pay $1,700 for a, for a weekend seminar. You know, and it, it, that's not what he did. That's not what he was about. You say he never mentioned God, but don't you think what he did was so deeply spiritual? It was this expression of his faith, his way of being. Very much so. And it comes down to this. Joanne, um, who is... She's a fire plug of a lady. She's just uh, fabulous. She's, we ask, you know, what would, what would Fred make of certain circumstances? There were two things um, that, that I remember um, Fred said. In, in times of disaster, where do we turn to in times of crisis? And he said, you turn to the helpers. You want to know what's going to come next? It's going to be some brand of hope that is going to be practiced by people who are volunteering their time to come and help you clean up your mess, fix your bandages, or talk to you and give you a cup of coffee and say, how are you? The other thing was that, that Joanne said is, what would he do now? Would he say something? Would he tweet something? Would he uh, proselytize some sort of like answer to whatever our, you know, the divisions that uh, the world seems to be going through now? And she said, no. At first I thought he might, but now I realize he would just be the best person he could and let that be the language for, of, uh, of, uh, for the solution to what it is. Just, just, just be good, <laughs> you know, or just be kind, or just be caring, or just be present. Uh, and that's, that's, you get into some kind of like major Zen, Hildebrand kind of thing there that is, ends up being kind of like the, the, the essence of, of, uh, of making the world a better place. But even though, in a way, it looks effortless, when you think about what he had to do to just be so decent. When Mari Hiller mind. told me that Fred Rogers died of stomach cancer, I thought, that's something deep inside that is, that is suppressed. And in the way I think of, like, certain caring, religious, philosophical figures, I think he did that. I think he made it a point, and he worked hard at, he made the choices day in and day out of <clears throat> what was important, and other people were more important than, than anything that he was going through. The, the, you know, if you look at his shows, which I saw eight million hours of it, you have, have, have your daughter, have you seen any of them like Yes, that? we watch it actually all the time. And you're probably waiting, and please cut, and please speed up, and please go somewhere else. And I watched Mr. Rogers as a little girl. Oh, you did, oh, and? I did. Did and you feel he was talking to you? Yes, and more interesting, I think, my daughter, who is five years old, watches Mr. Rogers in the back of the car on long trips with a little headset. And then she says, Mommy, Mr. Rogers says I'm fancy. <sighs> Mr. Rogers is talking to her still. Um, it's not for us. It's not for grown-ups who know how the world works. It's not for grown-ups who are waiting to be uh, flummoxed or, or dazzled. <clears throat> it's for children who are looking to be invested in by somebody who cares about them. Uh, and that... That comes off as nefarious to some people, right? What's, what's the point of that? Uh, what, what is he trying to, what are the apostles, what, you know, what, 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 what's the what, agenda? What gang is he trying yeah. to, yeah, exactly, what is, what is his agenda? And the agenda is, was just nothing other than say, you're worthwhile, you're special, and anything you're going through, you can share with me. I Ooh. think that's divine. You know, um, I don't know if you occasionally get in arguments with the, uh, your partner in life. Uh, but when my, my wife and I start going at it the way anybody goes at it, where she, someone says, you're not listening to me, and the other person, well, let me get this straight then. W when we get to that point of you're not going to lose and I'm not going to lose because we're both right, uh, the words come out almost magically. Well, you know what, honey? It's good to talk. <laughs> it's good to say the things we feel, it's good to talk, and it ends up being the great harmonizer because we have a right to feel bad. We, the, sometimes we feel bad, sometimes we feel glad, and ain't that true for, for all of us? So there is a... Um, You're doing Mr. Rogers I with Rita. <laughs> I, I, I pulled Mr. Rogers out of my pocket every now and again because I think I might know him a little bit better than I, than I used to. But it's true, and this is the thing that you can't deny. It's, it actually is... 
That's kind of like a rule for living, as opposed to a zero-sum game on which I defeat you and I win, or I am looking. The, the default mode of almost all of society now is cynicism. It's, you, can make a, you can make a good buck at it. Competition is, is kind of like attractive. Uh, the, it, it seems like you watch some movies and every problem is solved by a, you know, a blow to the head that ends an argument. Um, but it, it, it's, it, it, that's, not, that's, not what is, that's not how human, humankind have actually grown beyond where, uh, where it is we started. The, the, the default mode of cynicism in one that is hard to shut off. You have to go deep into your hard drive in order to find the button that you slide from constantly cynical to constantly hopeful. But when you, when you do that switch, it's not easy. It's not easy to maintain anyway. You will come to you know, some, kind of, some kind of argument and some kind of a, a verbal a, a conflict. But the truth still will always be this. Savannah? It's good to talk. <laughs> it's good to share the things we feel. It's good to talk. Don't make me cry. I'm not trying to, but there is a... Um, <laughs> it's, it's funny when uh, the, the, the movie does garner this kind of... I, I don't know where it comes from except for some degree of release from, <clears throat> from that constant grind of, I, I might overuse the word cynicism, but it wears you down after a while. It does. Being a constant cynic, what's the deal here? What's the agenda here? What are you trying to pull over my eyes? That's just self-protection. I mean, that's what I think is so interesting about Mr. Rob Rogers is that he was ultimately vulnerable by being so kind. He really was put himself on the line to be so kind. The opposite of cynicism is vulnerability. Yeah, and no one wants to lead with vulnerability. We all want to be met with compassion, but in order to do that, you actually do have to lead with some brand of vulnerability, which is like, I feel that bad too, as opposed to, oh, I never feel that way. Yeah. Oh, I, tell you, here, I live by these rules. Here's what you got to do. He had, uh, Tom Junot, who was the uh, uh, actual journalist that uh, Matthew Reese's character is based on, he was around a lot. Because um, his life was changed by Mr. Rogers, just by exposure to Mr. Rogers. And I asked him, I said, were you aware of the jujitsu thing that he was doing in, his, in, your, in, in your time with him? He says, not at first, but he became very much aware of it. I said, now, was that a self-defense mechanism of Fred's in order to, I'm not going to talk about myself because I don't want to go into that place of vulnerability. Mm but I am going to bring it around to somehow to you because you must be confused with the burden you have on your five-year-old daughter now. Savannah, you have a five-year-old kid who, who literally, her, her rules of living are being established by you. That must cause you some sleepless nights on occasion, doesn't it? He You're doing do, it again. I'm doing it again. And I've seen him do that over and over again in, in, in interviews, interviews just like it. And of but, course people want to be known. So it's so powerful. Right. But what he, what he was saying is, yes, I am a cracked vessel. And it's very hard to deal with those cracks sometimes because sometimes they never feel, they never seem to heal the way you want them to. Just as you sometimes, and you, you've gone, I'm trying to yes. do it again. Yes. But it was a shared sense of humanity that he was bringing up at the same time. He was going to protect some brand of, dare I say it, whatever it was that was inside him. That when we were when we were shooting the movie and it came time to do the scene where he prays and Joanne is just oh yeah oh no he prayed every night mm -hmm. and I so I was talking to Mari and it's like okay the, this prayer thing is it him sitting in a oh no no it's him him before bed I said we talk about kneeling before bed he says yeah we're gonna show him kneeling before bed. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be praying for a long list of people, some of whom we will know that we did not know. And he did that. Now, did he think it was doing good? Didn't matter. He was just going to offer it up to, you know. I God thought that was the most moving scene. Imagine if we all did that somehow for, for our, you know, the people that we cared about. That's a practice I started to adopt. Takes time, doesn't it? Yes. And do sometimes you forget to do it at night? Yes. But the simplicity of praying for someone by name with a whole, without a whole explanation, 
I actually learned, I mean, I learned that yeah. five days ago in the movie. He said, uh, we always got a quote uh, of Fred's attached to the call sheet every day. Somebody in the production officer said, oh, this, <laughs> this will pertain to what we're trying to shoot today. And uh, I don't know if it was one of the quotes, but I read it. It said, anybody can pray. And anybody can play, pray, and it only takes three simple words. And it's a prayer that your God will hear. And it is, thank you, God. That's all you have to do, say, thank you, God. Boy, that covers absolutely everything. Do you pray? I do. <laughs> you know, I do. And you know what I say? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yeah, that's it. I, sometimes, sometimes I say it when I'm, you know, not even thinking about anything. And sometimes I make it a specific moment to say, God, as I know God, thank you. It's funny. I know many people have remarked on the similarities of you to Mr. Rogers, not in your looks, but in your being. You seem to have an endless energy for people. You're I'm a kind. little more glib, I think, than uh, Mr. I'm, I have, I have, I don't, I, I have a different sort of curiosity, I think, than Mr. Mm -hmm. Rogers. If I was going to say that, that kind of thing, so what do you have in common with you? Well, they man? mean it as a compliment, you know. Well, I guess so, and I'll take it. Um, they but, mean it as a compliment because uh, you are kind. As here's he what is. it is. The only thing I can I've say, seen it in action. Okay. All right. Right. Well, you know, I work at it sometimes. I'm, uh, no lie. There's sometimes I don't. You know, I'm going I'm to be on display. So what am I going to do here? I think I'll try to meet with compassion and lead with vulnerability. I do that uh, because I know what the contract is between myself and, you know, uh, uh, I've been in an awful lot of people's living rooms for the better part of 30 years now, thanks to home video and doing the Today Show. I'm pretty for that. <laughs> but I wake up. I am a, I will tell you this. And it drives a number of my uh, family crazy. I wake up. I am a happy morning person. Um, and I, if that's the only thing I share with Mr. Rogers, I'll consider myself very, very lucky. Well, big question that the journalist in the movie has for Mr. Rogers is whether there's a burden, whether he carries a burden and how he carries it. And I did wonder if there is ever, and we can do all the caveats about your yeah. lucky life oh, sure. and how wonderful it is to be you, and I know you know that. But is there ever kind of that burden of being Tom Hanks, your America's sweetheart? I don't think there's a person on the planet Earth, no matter where they are, unless they are sociopaths, that don't, that don't have a moment somehow where they think, am I a fraud? <laughs> am I actually what this is? Am I actually being true to myself enough to feel as though at any given moment I truly am present? Because I am aware of there are times where you perform. I am aware that there are, there are moments where the expectations are you can never be met in 100 million years. I'm also very much aware of there are times when um, I want to say to somebody, get out of my way and get out of my face. Does that, is that the same thing as of having a good nature that people are taking advantage of? Or is that just a matter of being a cracked vessel that deals with things? There's, there's a moment in, in, the, in the interview process between me and Matthew in it in which uh, um, uh, the boys, uh, Mr. Rogers, and he says it could not have been easy being, being my kids. He says something to that effect. And that alone is really quite prescient. And it, I think it is a degree of compassion that he has for his boys, but also a vulnerability that he feels because there's nothing he can do in order to change it. Um, who doesn't at some point in the course of their day or their lives thinking, I'm just going to have to accept this thing because there's nothing I can do to, to change it. I can't relieve the burden on somebody else, and I can't take the burden upon myself in order to carry it for them. And that's, I think, when you think you're laying in bed or you get up and you're in the shower in the morning, <laughs> and you think, well, it's true. I'm a fraud. <laughs> I'm a cheat and I'm a fraud. But I'm just going to have to accept that in myself. It's not true. One final question. You know when we were at that event a few weeks ago? Yes, yes. And you know how I was the MC? I had to go out and um, I had to interview had to, someone you, on stage. Yeah, you had to cover I left my phone right next to you. <laughs> Did you take a selfie oh. <laughs> on my phone? <laughs> yeah, I have an unwritten rule. <laughs> That if you find an unguarded iPhone, take a selfie of it. Just put it back down. When did you? When did you? When did you find I that? I found it later, <laughs> and I thought Tom Hanks took a selfie on That's my right. cell phone. That's right. I did. I didn't know it was your cell phone. I just was leaving a selfie on it somewhere. My digital footprint will follow me everywhere. If I well, work thank you. Out. Good to see you. I love today. seeing you. Yeah, You're the great. best. When was the, uh, so? We've seen each other like what? About once every six months. I feel like well, we're six friends. Six weeks. 
Indianapolis, Indianapolis not too long ago. D.C., and now here we are. In and the, then Washington uh, last year. Oh, that's right. That's right. Well, so that's what I was going to say. What's I, next? I actually feel like we're friends. Here's I what feel I want like you to I know do you. Do I know you? Get a little picture of you somewhere in America, a little picture of me somewhere in America, and a little dot with question marks saying, where are Tom and Savannah going to meet next? And we'll find out on the day. Let's go somewhere and do something Let's good for somebody. Let's plan it right now. Okay, Amarillo, where should we go? Texas. How about that? That's funny. I was going to say, like, the Seychelles Islands. Okay, like, all I right. Mean, but Seychelles. Amarillo would be good. There's all some right. good people there. Somewhere between Amarillo <laughs> and the Seychelles, you and I will get together. Okay, we'll I love it. Try to do something great. Thank you.